Hi, my name is Jonas, this is Sublime Media and on this channel I talk about records and record related stuff like today when I am going to talk about two Elemental Music releases the, the newest of the newest from the record label uh, the first one is Karen Dalton's it's so hard to tell who's going to love you the best from 1969 and in the Par Hacks Parallelograms the masterpiece of a folk record but first, cue music So as you know by now, I have a record shop called sublimemedia.se. Check it out, I'm pretty proud of it. And these two could be purchased, no ordered. I don't have this in stock, but you can order this uh, through this shop. And I urge you to do that if you feel like these are something to invest in. Other than these, there are great selections of the best music ever uh, made. So go check it out. I'm going to start by talking about one of my favorite records of all time the Lina Par Hacks Parallelograms from 1970 this is on my maybe my top 50 of all records of all time I love this record to death and I actually have another reissue that I, I'm going to talk a little bit about because I had the opportunity to compare them and I have also decided which one to keep uh, but first Linda Par Hacks 1970 she came from nowhere like I don't think that she had a career before this this is the only thing she recorded um, and on cap records but it didn't sell and cap records did nothing to promote this so she just got tired of the entire thing and moved back and worked as a dental hygienist hygienist is that the word for it and it wasn't until 2014 that she actually released another record She's, i think that she's still alive today um, it would be awesome to have a, a conversation with her so that's a little bit of a background story for you about Linda now uh, when it comes to the music I just feel like this is straight up folk like the, when folk is the best <laughs> uh, it doesn't dwell in love themes it's not super politic um, it has a hippiness of the 60s to it without go going overboard and I have to say like this has more than one toe dipped in acid it's a psychedelic record but I would never say that this is a psychedelic record or acid folk record but I mean the themes of the lyrics is definitely uh, part in parts psychedelic uh, the recording or the production of the the record is also in my opinion psychedelic drawing inspiration from other psychedelic records uh, with stereo pan, pan, panorama you know pan and stuff like that so yeah but i would not label this as a psychedelic record but when it comes to the music this is a 10 out of 10 for me and i first encountered this when mick walkerfeld from opeth had his uh, radio show here in sweden and he just played records from his collection he had an original press of this played it and i fell in love with it right away got the sunday's three issue so this is back in 2010 uh, this is a shit sounding record it's super harsh so you can't really the vocals on this is unbearable so i've listened to this maybe three five times during the years uh, and every time i get a new cleaning machine of sorts i actually i always cleaned this just because I hoped that this would sound better, but it never did. So uh, I think it's it's a master uh, problem. And Sundays has put out some great records. I don't know. Uh, so spoiler alert: this was not my favorite of the two. Uh, but there is things with this that is better, and that is the uh, the cover. Uh, here's Elemental Music. Too much blue. In my opinion can you see that like it's it's very blue this is a popping um, cover artwork but it also uh, the consequence of that is that it lacks in detail so this a little bit more matte blue grayish blue is in my opinion better uh, but I don't have an original press to compare that to so I don't know which one is is uh, more in line of the original press my guess is this one because this has detail this doesn't have as much detail so i guess that this is the one but it's the only thing uh, about that record that is good 
So uh, let's get into what we are hearing. The music is 10 out of 10. So fine. And I have I don't have an original press to compare it to. But I've read a lot about the original press. And everyone says that that is a very sucky record. It sounds like shit. Uh, so any sort of <laughs> reissue sounds better than that one. So I feel like this is a better sounding record than that. But what are we hearing? Like, well, Linda Parhack's voice is the main man here. She is driving the bus like she would, uh, she should. And her voice is dead center, right in your face. And she has a very special way of performing, which in its own way is harsh, but there are a little bit of harshness to this. Now, this is a quiet record, both in music, but also in uh, vinyl quality. So you have a dead silent, no noise floor sort of uh, uh, pressing. It almost feels like it's digital right from the start. And when the music kicks in and when she starts singing, it's, yeah, you can really hear that it is digital. It has that sort of digital veil on it. Um, there is uh, there is a, a, a sticker here, but it doesn't say anything about the master. Just 180 gram and uh, then a review from all music. So definitely a digital copy. But as we know, digital copies can sound great. Just look at the Mo Fidelity. They do everything digital nowadays and they sound like a dream. So uh, her voice is dead center. Really good. A little bit too harsh when it comes to the instruments it's a very compact stage like sound stage so not that wide but you have great details on the acoustic guitars in particular um, and a little bit of air around them so I would actually say that when when it comes to the acoustic guitars they are the best sounding on the record there is a lack of bass on this one um, and I feel like I mean it shouldn't be bass heavy but they build, you know, you, they do, you, with a bass you set the foundation of sorts and if there is no bass at all, if you can't really hear the bass uh, carrying in the music, well, it's just like floating in midair. So I would pull up the bass a little bit more uh, just to have that sort of bass carpet to stand on. But other than that, a lovely uh, sounding record. Music wise, 10 out of 10 uh, when it comes to audio uh, audio quality. Uh, strong 6, 7. And again, I don't think that we will ever get a better sounding one than this. If not, uh, anyone get a hold of the tapes if they, ever, if they, if they even exist nowadays. Uh, and do a real sort of uh, analog mastering of, of this. So overall, I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to uh, sell my Sundance, Sunday's uh, reissue uh, without blinking. The new elemental music is The Keeper. Which brings us to the Karen Dalton record. This is, uh, it's so hard to tell who's going to love you the best from 1969. Now, Karen Dalton, she is <laughs> a character, isn't she? There's a documentary, you, I urge everyone to see that. Just watch that and get sort of get your information from from that one but uh, she released two records during her career uh, career and when she recorded this in 1969 I don't think that she was a stranger to the folk scene because she came out of the Greenwich Village sort of folk scene in mid 60s and was friends with Bob Dylan uh, Bob Dylan has talked about Karen Dalton's voice and um, many compare her to the Billie Holiday of folk voices which I don't feel that it's a fair uh, comparison maybe maybe uh, when it comes to tragic life but uh, not not the voice this is she she definitely have her voice uh, she was difficult to work with I think that this this recording is the living proof out of that. The, she refused to take any sort of um, direction when it came to her performances, and the only way to f capture anything on tape was to convince her that they were weren't recording, 
and then they recorded them in one take. So all the songs here, if I understood correctly, are just one takes. And they really uh, recorded everything during one night, one session. So, <clears throat> not the easiest to uh, work with. She hated everything that was commercial. She refused to do anything commercial. But this went nowhere. No one bought it. Uh, so when she released her second one, and I actually have a first US press of this, uh, in my own time, this maybe one or two years af afterwards, she actually does some covers. Uh, she, so she went a little bit like the commercial road on that one, but that was also the last thing she did. She, she had a super tragic life, uh, heavy into drugs and went back and forth into to rehabs, if I understood correctly. She died in a, in a uh, trailer, in a trailer park in 1993, just 55 years old of AIDS. <sighs> it's just so sad. But again, take a look at the documentary. I think that uh, you will enjoy it and you will enjoy her music even more after that one. Um, so yeah, when it comes to the music, she does some covers of blues tunes. Uh, it's more bluesy in feel than folky. A lot of the songs is love songs or the lack of <laughs> love and, and being left like classic themes, I guess. Um, and, and good. I wouldn't say that this is a masterpiece. At all I even think that in my opinion this is a better record than this uh, but maybe that's because I've listened to this to death uh, maybe a 7 out of 10 so the music uh, just like the Linda Parhacks obviously we have the voice and the voice is driving the bus as it should it's also in the center but it's not as in your face as the Linda Parhacks uh, it's a little bit behind and the instruments is also following a little bit behind so uh, it's more of a cohesive sort of recording and presentation uh, more than the Linda Parhax because there's no air between the instruments here uh, but they are working as one unit and you have a better bass on this one and, uh, than the Linda Parhax also and I feel like the entire sort of stage is a cone where uh, Karen is the tip of the cone and then everything follows a little bit narrow after her. Um, but in this case it really works. It, it's not a, a record that does wonders to your um, sound setup at home. And I'm let's say this is a 7 in audio quality. Um, and again, Elemental Music did a great job with this. I don't feel like we will get a, a better sounding copy than this. If not anyone, again, does an analog master thingy. But I don't feel like it's those kind of... That, that they, I mean, it's not commercial records, are they? It's not Blue with Joni Mitchell. You can... I, I bet you can watch my view count on this one and see how much of attention this these two records draws and that's a shame because these two both of them are better than anything Joni Mitchell did and, and I'm not I mean I'm a I'm, I'm a I'm a Joni Mitchell fan but this is something this is something else like in my opinion this is much more interesting in my opinion that doesn't mean that John Mitchell is bad, but this is more interesting in my opinion. So yeah, I hope you got something from that. If you have any questions, just let me know and uh, I'll talk to you in my next video. Have a great day everyone. So you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and give this a thumbs up because it really helps, it really does. Now if you want more content then just look me up on Instagram. I put stuff up there before uh, before YouTube, so a little bit of uh, what's coming up uh, so to speak. Again, thank you so much and have a great day everyone and I'll talk to you in my next video.